So Rosh Hashanah is approaching. So how do we live for this time? So around this time last year, what did God tell you? In 5784, what did God say will happen? Is that things actually happening in your life right now? What kind of influence is it giving us right now? And this new year, what is God going to do? I want you to clean up your heart. So many people live busy, so they don't know what they're doing and they're just moving forward. But what's clear is that according to God's promise, He's going to do something. So no matter what reason, whatever excuse you give, it doesn't matter. In His time, He's going to manifest. But that time, it's going to be a time you cannot predict. It's unexpected, suddenly. Okay? So don't just follow how this world is going, but stand, stand firm and have time to focus on God. Expand that time to focus on God. Otherwise, you're all going to be deceived. So I'm looking more and more you say, can that person be so, um, like, brazen? How can they be so, like, uh, so you just have to respond before God. Okay? So I hope you'd all become that kind of people. I mean, respond before God. So don't just compromise. And you say that's not my problem. If you don't take care, if you don't care about it, who's gonna care about it? So this is the world that you belong in. It's the world that God has entrusted to you. So based on how you respond, it'll decide if something's gonna happen or not. Okay. So it's our, you and me, responsibility. And he's gonna also take. He's gonna ask you, "What did you do when you be, when you go up to him?" So, Lord, just in this time, everyone who's listening to his word, let your eyes and ears be opened. Let your heart be broken. Be humble before the word of God. And let us re-examine our life and be led by the Holy Spirit. Be convicted by follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And let us respond humbly before God. So work in us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So Luke 16, it's a verse that I use a lot. So this verse in Mexico, when I first met God, this is the verse that He let me understand and realize. So let's read this one more time, Luke 16. And I want to challenge you again, so that's why I want to start with this verse. So Luke chapter 16 from verse 1 to 13. Let's all read it together. English, English. All read together, okay? He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debt debtors to him and said to the first how much do you owe my master and he said a hundred measures of oil so he said to him take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50 then he said to another how and how much do you owe so he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said to him take your bill and write 80 so the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. 
He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So now you read this, so you know what it means. So you're the owner, and let's say you're a steward. There's someone like this among your stewards. If you discover this, what are you going to do? How long have we worked together for? Are you just going to leave them be? Or are you going to fire them? So your CEO would know better. It's a hard question, right? There's a time you worked together, you worked so hard together, you suffered together. But he was wasting his goods. What are you going to do? So he thinks about it. He's thinking about it. So when you look at this, so the owner received this report. So it's now he's done this for a long time. The owner said, "Prove it. Give an account of your stewardship, right?" When he said that, I'm going to fire you. In the Bible, this is what Jesus clearly says. It's the unjust steward. And the NIV is the dishonest servant steward. So that means he is an unjust steward. Even Jesus said he is an unjust steward. But what he did, he took even more of his owner's money. He called his debtors, and he was acting as the master, and he was cutting them down, right? I mean, cutting down the amount they owed, right? So he ended up stealing more of his master's money, right? He said, when someone owed 100, he said, oh, just write down 80. So listen what Jesus is saying. The unjust steward and the end time, so for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. So he clearly said that he is an unjust steward, but he said he's more shrewd, more wise. What do you think Jesus is trying to say here? He said the unjust steward is more shrewd, more wise. So he stole his owner's money and then you take more of the owner's money? Is that what you think Jesus is telling you to do? Do you think that Jesus is telling you to take more of your boss's money? What? Why do you think he called the unjust steward shrewd and wise? So after he gets fired, so because he's lived like this until now, he cannot even dig the own ground, right? So if he takes care of the depths of those people, then at least those people will accept him into his house, right? Because he lowered the amount of debt they have. So why did Jesus call him wise? So no matter how he lived until now, when the judgment comes in the end time, it means that he prepared in advance. That's why he was shrewd. So then you, what about you? Are you preparing? So the Bible says this. So it's a verse that I use very well. It's a funeral message. So everyone has a set time they're going to die, and then, and then there's a judgment. So in their life, you have to prepare for after your death. Are you preparing? You know, you say, oh, I don't have to do it. I'm going to live a long life. Those who have a hard time, they want to die early. But if you're living a good life, do you think they're going to prepare? No, not really. But, but he suddenly comes. He comes unexpectedly. So if you're not prepared, then there's going to be a problem. Because Jesus is going to come unexpectedly, suddenly. So if you're not prepared, there's going to be a problem. So it says the unjust um, goods, right? It's not his. So it's not even yours. 
but have you know meet those kind of people make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon together right so what does this mean so is your life yours so your life is not yours but if you live the way you want to live then are you the just steward or unjust steward what is Jesus saying so if you knew that you're an unjust steward then what is not yours you meet, make friends for yourselves right and prepare your future so this is a very deep meaning but if you misunderstand this you might think oh I'm going to steal and then help other thieves but that's not what Jesus is trying to say here so if you clearly know that it's not yours then using that you give it to someone else who doesn't know so that person can also prepare for the future like you help them to prepare for the future like you so in other words so regarding the life he gave you if you didn't know what the meaning of your life was until now from now on regarding your life those people who don't know how to live their life their purpose of their life you tell them who the master is you tell them who the boss is and to prepare for their future and your future too help them do you understand is your eyes open now what this truly means do you understand if you tell your little children to prepare for the future you're going to say already if you get married you pray for them Not now. You already get friends, yeah? Girlfriend. Come to me, Haji. Then you have to prepare, right? I was in the house. Without any enjoy. Are you just enjoying? Yeah. So many people, just without any meaning, they're just living their life. So they're saying a very important thing here. If you want to know what has been given to you, then regarding your boss that's above you, right? It's not your work. It's not, it's not you work hard and you become rich, but the boss becomes rich, right? So it's not your work, but regarding his work, when you obey, then the inheritance that's supposed to come to you through someone else, it'll come to you. Because of this, he was brokenhearted. He thought, if I work hard, then God will reward me. But the condition to your current boss, whether it's a small thing or big thing, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. So small thief becomes big thief. So it's the same heart. So unless your perspective changes into your current boss, you cannot be faithful. Why? Because you're always going to try to find your own benefit. I'm going to just take all the know-how, all the knowledge, and I'm going to make my own business somewhere else. But look carefully. So the spiritual principle, the kingdom of God, so the sign regarding the same kingdom of God those who are not faithful to what has been assigned to you the inheritance and blessing that is supposed to come to you no matter how much you work hard none of it will be released to you so when I understood this whether your boss is right or wrong your position is to protect him is to save him so I understood this and when I came back there was a test right away so that he got cursed instead he didn't make the wrong choice but his boss did you know, Korean, you know, men, they can hold hands, put shoulder, hand over their shoulders, but the American leader said that's gay, that's lesbian. So he caused a scene, caused a problem, even though, you know, it's normal in Korea. 
So clearly he did something wrong, right? The American boss. And he had to stand in front and prevent it. If he doesn't, then it's going to become his problem. So he apologized in, in, on, on behalf. He talked to the leader about the culture. So um, you, American culture has an issue. So because of your distorted um, perspective, that's why everyone else looks the same to you. But if you go back to God's way, then there's no issue. So he protected, right? And then God, according to his promise, he really started to release one by one. So all the hindrances that came unto him changed to 180 degrees. And he couldn't even speak English very well back then. But the American, the parents came and said to him, right, among all the teachers we met so far, this is the first time I saw a teacher who takes care so much care for their students. He couldn't even speak English well. So your thinking has to change so that your life will change. So prepare for the future. What are you going to prepare? He's going to come back, right? He said he's coming back. We all know that, right? But we don't know when he's coming back. But we have to prepare. So what do we have to prepare? So let's say you have your wedding date and then you got engaged, but you don't have the wedding date yet. You can get married when the bridegroom comes. What are you going to do? Because your bridegroom's far away and you cannot even contact him in advance. He's going to come unexpectedly. Your bridegroom is going to come unexpectedly, but if you don't prepare, you, you cannot do the wedding, right? So when Jesus comes, where is he going to judge first? What? He's going to judge the believers first. He's going to start from the believers when he comes back. So then are you prepared? Are you just living according to this trend of the world? So the season right now is very close. I feel it. Why? Because this world, this corruption, is beyond your like beyond your thinking, right? The way people are getting tempted is beyond your imagination. So when you understand God's word. And you can discern, if you don't have the sense to discern the spirit, then you cannot go through, right? So what do you have to prepare? How can you discern? And how can you follow what God wants to do? And you can you know, enjoy this blessing that God wants to give to you. So let's go from now. Number one, Isaiah 40, from verse 3 to 5. So what should you have to prepare? The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So what do you have to prepare? Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Pre the way. So if you don't know the way, you cannot prepare. So your um, customers coming, so you have to prepare the food. You went to the market and everything. But if you don't know how to make the food, then you cannot prepare, right? So the time the customer's coming has been determined. So then you know how long it's going to take to prepare it too. So you know when you have to start. So the first start. So the Israelites are living among the sin, but you said to comfort, comfort, comfort Israel. So your sin, iniquity is over. It's been forgiven. Yeah, it's been forgiven. And I'm going to repay you two times more. So you've been forgiven. Then what do you have to do? Prepare the way of the Lord.
Are you born again? Are you called to someone who believes in Jesus? So raise your hand. I am Christian. Raise your hand. Raise a high. I said lift up hands, but you guys only lift it up on the table. Your hands are so heavy, it doesn't go up. When you go to the health club first, it's like you're lifting such a strong weight, heavy weight. Are you Christian? If you're a Christian, you wouldn't answer silently. Who's going to know? In the school, you expose I am Christian, or you try to hide. Why don't you not? Why do you not reveal that you're a Christian? It's shame. How come? If I expose I am Christian, something happened around you. What kind of happen? Is fear fearful? Wow, God. Okay, heavenly army come down. And then you never show up, I am Christian. And shock on the shock. You will die. Because you never expose yourself. The prostitute Lahab. The prostitute Rahab. She's Rahab. She's a prostit prostitute. She chose to be with the Israelites. So she proclaimed, you know, and publicly. That's why she survived, right? So it's the same in this time and season right now. So in this world, you have to say you are Christian and boldly, unless those who boldly shine their light. You're gonna die. Even the Passover is the same. You have to sprinkle the blood on the doorpost, right? That way, the uh, angel of death will pass over, right? Same thing. So the Egyptian influence, you have to publicly say that I've been saved by God. You have to expose it, reveal it. That way, you'll be protected. Even in the midst of the Egyptians, right? So this time, right now, this world, the Christians, they threaten so that the Christians cannot speak the truth or try to mess your life up. Even at a mission school, you say, I am Christian. Rather, you're more hidden, more covered. Hide in there. Do you think everyone in the church will 100% all receive salvation? So if you ask, there's probably many people who are not even confident. If you ask why, they said because I haven't done anything. So did you receive salvation because you did something? Because if you're doing that because you don't know the truth. You don't know how to respond by faith. It's because you don't clearly know who you are. So the Lord to the Israelites, after he set them free from his sins, what he commanded them, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, to do what? Prepare the way of the Lord. So what do they know? So the way of the Lord, what do they know? They just have to say what they experienced until now, right? We sinned until now, but God kept comforting us, comforting us. And the spiritual warfare is over, and the sin, iniquity, transgression, He atoned for, it for us, forgave us for, of it, and then He restored us. Even though you're forgiven, the restoration takes time, right? Your authority doesn't, your rights doesn't get restored right away, right? But in Jesus Christ, as soon as you are forgiven, all the right and everything will be restored. So that right and responsibility is what? To prepare the way of the Lord.
So what can you do? You just got to say what you know. You just say what you experienced. So by the blood of the Lamb saved us, with the word of your testimony, you can overcome Satan, right? So as you give that testimony, so what is revealed, you start to realize, oh, I have the same weakness. So this has to begin, this preparation has to begin, so that you'll start to realize your heart still has issues. But if you don't even give those words, those testimonies, then you'll be covered by the darkness and you cannot distinguish. So make the crooked place straight and the rough places smooth. So according to the word of God, when you're going to live according to the word of God, you realize your heart is distorted, heart is wounded. You start to realize, oh, the person living with me is going to have a hard time living with me because you're going up and down, up and down because you don't know when something's going to happen. You cannot even understand why you get angry. But it's coming out inside of you. What are you going to do? So the way of the Lord. So the open the path for the Lord to work in you. So you know why you've been stuck until now and you've been forgiven of your sins. So everything that you did until now, that stuff is still going to remain in your life. So you have to do the process to bring it back to the original creation. Right? You have to start that work. So starting, beginning means it's not you try to heal yourself. You cannot fix yourself. You know you cannot do it by yourself, right? In your life, but you tell other people you got to fix your life, even though you cannot do it yourself. So the crab cannot move forward, right? Crab cannot walk forward. They can only go sideways. You know, crab, right? But he tells his son, Hey, you stupid. Go forward. Go forward. You have to go forward for there to be something to eat. I'll show you an example. Follow me. And the father also goes sideways. <laughs> That is life. But we're repeating that. So you're living like this right now? Be because your parents did it, so you're used to it, so you do the same thing. You, when you raise your children, you were scolded for it a lot, but your children's doing the same thing. So then what will come up inside of you? You'll get angry, irritated, right? And he said, I'm going to show an example, and then what do you do? You do the same thing over and over. So don't try to fix someone so it doesn't work like that. So what should you do? He says to do the way of the Lord, not the way of yourself. He never said that. So you love and you get married and you give birth to a child. Can you do the way of yourself? Are you doing the way of yourself right now? It doesn't work like that, right? So after marriage, the first thing you have to learn, oh, it doesn't work according to my way. Those who cannot learn this until the end, to the end, they're going to keep doing it. Until your partner dies and they think it's going to end after they die? No, it doesn't end. So you have to understand this area. Because you cannot understand this, that's why you keep going in this evil cycle over and over and over again. You had our time, but you keep calling the same thing over and over, like a cycle. So it's an evil cycle. So you say the heel fix, but you don't even know why it's crooked. You don't know why it became crooked. And you don't know what you should do for it to become straight. Because you're uncomfortable, you just say, don't do it. Because you, yeah, you felt uncomfortable, you just say, don't do it. So you don't even have the solution, but if you keep saying to do it, then you feel like you're going to die, right? You want to get out of it, right? So change your thinking. So you have to change your thinking. So how did God come? How did Jesus come? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. So in Korean, there's two different kinds of A's. So you might get confused because one A, so one ne means you and another ne means me. So it could be confusing. But in English, it's I and you. So it's easier. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So when you listen to the Lord's word and when you try to act on it, then your heart being exposed is grace. On Thursday, we talked about Hosea, right? When he tries to heal you, restore you, everything that you've hidden until now, all the sin, iniquity, transgression is going to be exposed. But the problem is starts from there. When it's exposed, how are you going to respond? Those who truly want to be healed, when it's exposed, when it's revealed, you're going to go to the one who can heal you. But those who do not, when it's exposed, you try to find someone. Someone to blame. And you try to hide. That's what the lesson says in Hosea. So they don't know that I know everything. They don't even remember that I know all of their works, right? In Hosea. That's what people are. That's who we are. Do you understand? So then what should we do? So it's very simple. So these things will happen because we're living in the world. But un- we have to interpret this picture very well. Why is it happening? In Romans 8, those who love God, those who are called according to the will of His purpose, these things will happen to them. So they know who, the, who to go to. That's why He allows it to happen. And you have to think of the, those things being exposed, being revealed as grace. You have to give thanksgiving. But as soon as you say, oh, it's because of that person this is happening, then that's it. You become like Adam and Eve. You become blind. You end up killing each other. Do you understand? So humbly, just acknowledge the truth as it is. That's the first step. Let's do it, Lord Jesus. In my life that I've led until now, I didn't like it. And all the things I had such a hard time with, because I didn't want to go through the same thing again. All the words that I've spoken, and when I'm raising my children, and my children are doing even worse than me. I confess and repent that this, I didn't know this was your creation principle. So when these things are happening, in order to, I didn't understand that you were revealing this to heal me. I didn't give thanks to you. I wasn't humble. Rather, I blamed, complained, hated, scolded others. To make them perish. So to the end, I wanted it to happen in my way, God's word. I neglected His word, so I confess and repent. So right now, before you, Lord, I humbly come before you, bow down before you. So I don't have the strength to handle this on my own. Only Father God, you sent your Son Jesus Christ. Other than the grace that you have allowed to us, I cannot go down this path, so I acknowledge it. So Holy Spirit, take mercy all over me. So this crooked, distorted, messed up life, come into my life and heal me. Touch me. So set me free. So when this is restored, so the Lord's glory will manifest through me. All human beings, all people, all the nations will see. But all the unrighteous people, through the Son Jesus Christ, they see how I have changed, and even their life. Let them come before you, Lord, and let also them be changed too and transformed. So touch our life. Amen. So the reason why He wants to heal you, to prepare for what? Because we're going to see His glory. So while we're on this earth, 
Unless we prepare to receive His glory, we, can, we might die as soon as we go to heaven. We cannot endure. Of course, He covered us with His blood and He can help us to endure. But we might not be able to enjoy the different glory levels. Do you understand? So God's picture is to save us. God's picture, according to how He originally created us, He wants the glory to manifest through us. So many things we were deceived by Satan. We were self-deceived. And we try to blame others. Because of that, we wasted a lot of our time in vain. Then from now on, one day is like a thousand years, and another a thousand years is like one day. So when we give Him our life, we leave it to Him. And even things we don't know about, He will heal us. That's His grace. And then, to make what? The holy highway. He wants to make the highway of holiness, Isaiah 35. So, you'll see His glory. So, what kind of glory? To who? To the one who made the highway of holiness. So, Isaiah 35, verse 8. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall be not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with, uh, with singing with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So the holy highway, Jesus already made it on the cross. When he said, it is finished, the, he made the holy highway. So that way on this earth, you can directly access to his throne room. He made that path. When Jesus died, the veil was torn from top to bottom. It was torn. So no matter who trusts in the blood of Jesus, you can go in. So what does it say here? Who can go in? The unclean cannot. So who can? The redeemed. The redeemed or ransomed. So the redeemed and the ransomed. Someone who paid for their sins on behalf of them. They've been acknowledged without sin. So those who are redeemed. So every mistake you made until now, He forgave all of you. And according to back to His way, He restored. Those who received that restoration, you can go to that path. So then do you have the right or you don't have the right? Do you have the right or you don't have the right? But you don't even know if you have the right or not. That's why there's an issue. So there's the promise, but the reason why it doesn't become a reality is because you don't even know this is who you are. So there's a promise in your name, but you don't know how to use it. You don't even know the password. You don't even know you have an account. That's why you're just begging. Okay? So use who na whose name? Use the name of Jesus. Say what? Proclaim His blood. So follow after me, Lord Jesus. So my weakness is manifest whenever it's revealed and exposed. So the desire that I cannot endure the, the lust and temptation is exposed. So the only place I can go to is before the cross of Jesus. Who endured on behalf of me all this suffering, and by the blood of Jesus, He died for me and He resurrected. He opened the new way for me. I want to rely on Your blood. So, by the blood of Jesus, all my weakness, iniquity, sin, transgression, cover me, redeem me, and uh, pay the ransom for me. Make me whole. Make me humble. Make me honest. Make me honest. Make me faithful. Make me faithful. And remove all fear. And then you can boldly come into the Father. And then you can come boldly into the Father's heart. So when you agree to His word and you connect it and you just let it go according to His word, then the way will just open up. Thank <laughs> you.
The, the way was straightened before you. Have you ever tried to un untangle the thread? Have you ever got tired of trying to untangle so you just cut it with the scissor? Or you do it until the end to untangle. But you work all night, it doesn't get untangled. It was simple. So the tangled up things, you don't even know why it's been tangled up. If you knew that, then you wouldn't make it tangled. You're living the life of not knowing why it's being tangled up. So the way to untangle it, so the one who knows about all of you, the one who created you, you go back to him. So when the problem happens, so when you just know where to go, then you can be set free. So you just have to learn how to go to Jesus Christ. So if you just have that humbleness, then you can live. No matter what happens, rather than complain, blame, or condemn, or curse, rather than that, only the name of Jesus can resolve this when you acknowledge it and you come before Him. So by His, Jesus' his blood, He will untangle and release everything at once. So you saw earlier, so He'll release it and double. He's going to repay double, two times, double times. He repeats it by double, and He tells you, one thing he asks of you one thing so the voice become the voice of the one crying in the wilderness so, so not in a good place but where wilderness when they're suffering there's a lot of issues go to those who are lonely and having issues and just like he helped us experience become the one who proclaims his name to them too so even all the crook things that you didn't even know he will heal you with double so double anointing they live and you live too right when you go out to them but the Koreans they said you die and I'll die too so the parents in Korea they have the habitual word of let's die together right but if you say it in America the police is going to come so it's the culture difference so let's die together it's because there's no solution so let's kill our flesh and live a new life. But you die first. That's the hidden heart behind the word, but that's how, but they don't experience express it like that. That's why there's a problem. So even for you, Jesus in order, God in order to heal you, He made a conflict happen. But if you don't understand if you don't understand this and you say you die and I'll die. So when you say that, so then you died first. So let's see how selfish this is. He doesn't say, I'll die, and then you die. Then how do you know if you, after that person dies, you're going to die? What are you going to guarantee? So people are so selfish and so arrogant, right? They say, you die first. Do you understand? So in order to hinder that, that's why he gave it to He died for you. He died on behalf of you because he's where he was. you were going to say that. So when you accept him, so then your hindrances will be open, and when you when the path opens, then the glory will come. Let's go to Isaiah chapter forty-five. He says the same thing because people he spoke this to the Israelites, but people they didn't understand. So that's why he chose a Gentile and he anointed him so that the restoration of Israel can happen. So he said to take all the treasures back to your temple and rebuild the temple. Right. So he says it again. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and make the crooked place straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. So look how interesting this is. So the blessing and restoration is always double. So in your heart, you will just be like, oh, it'd be good just to have the restoration. So that's not where God's picture is. So he always says double. Do you know why? Because Jesus is the firstborn. He's the eldest brother. That's why he always says double anointing. So when you accept him, 
then double will come. So what door has to be opened? The double doors have to be opened, right? So it's opened. But always, if it's opened, then he has to come. So the red carpet has to be rolled out, right? You're the star. Celebrities, when the stars come, they roll out the red carpet, right? And they... Aren't you a star too? So before you came down as a human being, you were a spiritual star. That's why people like stars so much. Sports star. Movie star. In the hotels, how many stars they are, right? That's why I had you sleep in the wilderness so you can see the stars. Did you try to count the stars in the sky at the wilderness? With how many star room did you live, hotel did you sleep in? The uncountable star, incredible hotel, right? In the wilderness. So what is so the tent in the wilderness, right? So you might smell the camel poop. But the tent in the wilderness, what does that mean? So this is what the voice of the one crying in the wilderness is. In order to give this to you, so I'll go before you and I'm going to do this. When you just agree, if you just acknowledge, then you, if you just want to become like this, then I will send my servant, I will send my angels, and I'll prepare the way and the path and I'll invite you. But if you, are you still going to say no thank you? That's why it's so frustrating. Because you cannot see that picture, you just keep your mouth shut and you say no thank you. So if you worship the Lord and fear the Lord, and the path will be open, but you keep your mouth shut. So earlier we did a song that was... The beat was fast and he, Tim started to move his body a little bit. He kind of stepped... And he felt a little awkward after meeting Pastor's eyes. He just stopped. So I know you have the rhythm, the musical sense. But why don't you do it? You have that resisting spirit inside of you. So that's the crooked way. That's the messed up. Then someone has to be the voice, the one crying, right? Who are you going to cry out to? The more you cry out to people, the more issues there's going to be. So who should you cry out to? To the Lord, right? That's why he says to cry out in the wilderness. Is there people in the wilderness? But he says to cry out, right? So if it's not the wilderness, you will not cry out. Do you understand? If you're okay, if you're living a comfortable life, then you're not going to cry out. It's the wilderness, that's how you cry out. So, so John the Baptist was crying out in the wilderness and people were coming, right, to him. So you have to believe in this. According to what God promised, if you obey, then the miracles beyond your imagination will start to happen. So you mess up in your whole life and your family life, all these things that were messed up, and boom, Jesus would handle it one time. So what is the condition for that? Cry out! Jesus, help me. I cannot do anything without you. How many times again and again? I don't want this kind of lifestyle. I want to be free. That's why he came. So the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to proclaim the gospel to the poor, all the ones who are bound, who are chained, those who are crying out, those who are depressed, helpless, hopeless, those who are in prison. Set you free on the name of Jesus Christ. Set you free. That's the way of the Lord. Very simple. So when you agree, you speak, you believe it'll happen, and you cry out, and you cry out again, and you cry out again, then he will come running. 
mothers will know if Elliot's crying, who comes first? Eric or Tali? Tali first. Mothers are usually faster. Because you held, had him in your stomach for the womb for 10 months, right? So it's a big impact. So the daughters, he never, sa- he never said sons of Jerusalem. He said daughters of Jerusalem, but cannot do anything about it. That's how God created us. He said daughters of Jerusalem, do not cry for me, but for you and your children. He said to cry, he didn't say to... He doesn't say to... Do not mock them. So the Lord will definitely respond to your cry. He'll answer quickly, immediately. Believe it. So when he lost hope and he drank alcohol and when he was messing up his life, his mother every morning brought a white paper and came before the Lord. Because everything his parents planned was all destroyed. He said, I'm not going to force how my, I want my children to become because Lord, you created him. So Lord, according to your picture, draw it. Then my, then my cry might be stopped. So that's why he had the grace that he was rebelling, but he came back before the Lord. That's why he was able to meet us. And then behind, there was a lot of wounds and sad issues and many things. So the more you come closer to him, why did my life become like this? Why is this not working out? You'll start to know. He'll start to teach you the secrets. He'll even tell you the solution. So as long as you just agree and you just call out his name, so no matter whoever calls on the name of the Lord will have not only have eternal life but you will not be ashamed so the bronze doors will be uh, broken and the iron bars will be cut down so the hidden treasures will be released so all the ability, power, and plans that God has hidden from you, He will start to release it to you. So that no matter what happens in this world, the wisdom He gives you, this world cannot handle. They won't be, un- be able to understand. Many people, other people cannot solve it, but when you know that Jesus and those who call out to Him, the crying out from that person and just one tear, You and me in this world, this family line, we can change everything. Are you going to prepare? So the first preparation. Prepare the way of the Lord. Okay? The Lord Jesus, in this time, we humbly bow down before you. So we didn't know so many things. And even when we didn't know, we didn't know that was ignorance. We were being proudful. We tried to do it in our way. We messed it up even more. But because that was hard, we tried to find a person to complain and then return to the evil cycle. And now there is no place to hide, no place to run away, so I acknowledge that. But Lord, according to the promise in the Bible, I will meet you in the wilderness. I will save you in the wilderness. I will redeem you and forgive you in the wilderness. Become the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. I choose to obey that word. So now before you, Lord, I will cry out. So that Father's heart by the Holy Spirit pour it out upon me. There's no word you, Father, plan. Let me understand. Let me know. And every time I cry out, let your heart shake. Let your heart move that on this earth, your power and authority and and your wisdom and love and all the supernatural things, let it be poured out. 
So that way, the other people who are many people living in the wilderness, so they l l come back before the Lord, and to get there will be worship before you. Make building up the kingdom of God. Let us all participate together. So heal me and use me. So in Jesus' name, I pray. Do you all agree? Amen. Amen.